Yeah. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Good. How are you? Good. Has anybody heard about the Career Center? Oh, yes. Good. I know you look very familiar. Okay. We were asked to um, come in and give you a little bit of a background of what the services that we offer at our, the Greater New Bedford Career Center. And like she said, we do a lot. We offer a lot of services for um, even students attending colleges, programs on their own. But the most important part of our goal is to, that once you have your education, you're ready to look for work, that's when we come in and you can utilize all our services. The main thing that we request from anyone coming in through our doors is that you become a member of the Career Center because that way you become eligible for all the services that are provided at the Career Center. We do a lot of job placements. Um, we help you with resume workshops. Um, networking. We also do um, a lot of recruitments at our career center and like the presentation that the the lady did, we are connected to Facebook. So go on Facebook, request the Greater New Bedford Career Center because we have someone at our site that every week when we have recruiters or employers coming in for job placements, they're posted on Facebook and we're also on Twitter. And that's good because we updated and the hot jobs list is also put onto the Facebook. Okay. And the only requirement is that you get registered with the Career Center. If you're not sure what type of services you might be interested in, we can also schedule you for one of our Career Center seminars and you will be assigned to what's called a Career Advisor. You'll meet with that individual and we can help you with education, training, and job search, whatever might be your need. But just know that we're there and we're always there to help anyone that's interested in our assistance. So what Marie just did, she just gave a, a, a very quick synopsis, and I'll break it down just a little bit more for you, okay? So you walk into the career center, you really don't know why you're going there. Sometimes you're collecting unemployment benefits, and you're mandated by the state, I have to attend, so why am I here, what am I going to do? Typically, you need to do job search if you're collecting unemployment benefits, so we can start with that. When you get inside the doors, you find there's many more things to do. So again, backstepping just a little bit, you register and you become a member, you get a little membership card. That tracks all the times you're in the career center. What's good about that? Sometimes you're mandated by the state once again to do job search. That, that registers right to the state office that you're doing it, exactly what they're telling you. Sometimes a person may come in, they're collecting um, public assistance, for example, and they too are mandated to do some kind of job search. You're now a member, you swipe your card, goes to the computer, the state, once again, has all your information. They know you're doing exactly what you want to do. But we don't let you stop there. And what she said very quickly again was we ask that you attend a career center seminar. And that's a PowerPoint presentation. We do have things like that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to bore this group not knowing what your background and what your reasons for being here are. But that presentation that lasts about an hour tells you everything that we can do for you and what resources we have there in the career center. So you attend one of those. What Marie explained to you is very true now. Our process is a little different. At the end of that career center seminar, you're assigned to a one-on-one -on -one career counselor. And this is the person that can walk you through all the rest of the steps that you find necessary to end up where you want to be. You may simply want to just do jobs that you graduate from BCC, you've gotten everything mm -hmm. you want, now let's get a job. They're going to help you here, we know that. We know there's a career services department, but sometimes that, that schedule may not always work for you. You need another timing, another frame, and that's fine. So, and it's nothing about having two people. Look at all the things that you're, you're required to do to be successful in your job search. Great to have more, more hands working with you, okay? Mm -hmm. But you may also find, and that can reflect on anybody coming out of BCC, that you need maybe one more course. Your financial aid has run out. You were paying for it on your own. You had a parent or a friend or a relative helping you. That's kind of run out. You need one more thing to be successful, or now that you've gone down your journey, you want to do one more thing to add on to that, because you know that's going to make you more employable, but your money's not there. We become for you a financial agent with no problem at all. Once you're deemed eligible, you're now a member. We help you through the eligibility process, because it is state and federally funded. Once that happens, we can offer you that little bit. We do not support a two-year degree, which most of you have come in here for. Certainly not a four-year degree, but we can fill in the gaps for people that have started things like that on their own and just haven't quite gotten there. And that happens very often. For whatever reason, life gets in your way and you just never got to that degree. Sometimes people owe a little bit of money, can't get to it right away. You need to finish your education so you can get a job so you can pay off your financial aid. 
and they're still not there. So they need a little bit of financial help to get out of their own way and finish off what they started. We certainly can do that. The other thing is very interesting looking at your agenda because these are the things we do as well. Mm -hmm. And that's not suggesting that you get away from BCC. I know you've become a very close-knit community. You know how to get all the resources here and that's fine. It may not always work to your schedule. We do offer the same services. I'm looking here at the library research, of course. Career exploration is actually a workshop that I, I run. And that just helps you open up your eyes as far as what you really want to do. Now you're sitting here, so I imagine you're already in class, but to friends, family uh, members that maybe don't know for sure what they want, that's what I try to do in that particular workshop, open up your eyes. What do you have in your background? What do you need that you can use your background in, because you don't want to start something brand new and have no experience, but what can you use your background in and add to it to now be more marketable? Okay, so that's how you want to think of your career exploration. How to write a great cover letter, resume, there's workshops to cover all that. Again, they, t they take you through it here. You maybe want another set of eyes to look at it, okay? They, this is what we've done, they know me like this, but I want to explore it a little more. So you certainly can attend a workshop that would cover that. The past show, we used to actually do that. We don't, mm -hmm. unfortunately, do that anymore. That's a lot of fun, but we can help you with the mock interviews. And what she gave us some very valuable tips to know how to interview. That's probably the most important. Your resume becomes you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know that now. Nobody wants to see you in person right away. That, it's unfortunate, but that, that's the way it is. You've got to be a little bit computer savvy. You've got to get that resume out there. But more important, you've got to get that resume to identify who you are with at a first glance. So you, that becomes your most valuable tool, believe it or not. Sad to say. So work on it. Get other people's opinion. They, they may be the best um, resume workshops here, but you want one more person to look at it from a different point of view. Because you want, when that employer has a stack of resumes in his hand, you want yours to stand out and you want to be different. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put fluorescent paper, no. That's not the kind of different. But there are tricks to make yours so invaluable, okay? Um, the one thing that I did here, and she was talking about interviewing tips, and, and um, the one thing I talk about in my workshop that I, I get stuck on is your wages. How do you talk about that? And yeah, how, I, I think that's so important. And I interview people to come into my job as well. That's a part of my role. And I feel badly when people feel stuck and can't ask. So my hint to you is, in the resource room at the Career Center, we have books as well as on the computer. It's called Labor Market Information. We actually send them to BCC as well. So try to find someone that can help you with that if you don't know it. But you want to look up the labor market. And what that tells you is, number one, where the jobs are that you're looking for. Are they in an area that you're willing to travel? You know, great to have this job of phlebotomist, but if it's in New York, you're not, if it's only in Boston, you, you may not be able to do that. Providence has a lot of openings. Can you get to Providence? Are you prepared to do that? But you want to know that. Okay, so that's a piece of it. It's going to tell you how many there are available. I don't know how much weight I put in that because what's available today may not be available in three months down the road when you're done. But it gives you a little bit of an idea. What it does to, for you, in my opinion, the best thing is to give you a wage range. Now when you go for that interview and someone says to you, well, how much did you want to make? What a question. You like, how do you answer that? You certainly don't want to give a figure that's so low and they're willing to do something higher, but how would you know? You don't want to get a figure that's so high that, that you're out the door because they, they, they're just not going to pay that. But it's what you need. What you do with this labor market information and with that uh, range is you say, you know, I, I'm certainly, it's negotiable, but I do realize that this type of work mandates 14 to $18 an hour. And you have some valuable information to share with them and something to, to start the conversation about. They may not answer you there, probably they won't. But at least, you're, you're, it's an intelligent answer. This, this person did their research, they know what the value of that job is, and I can't blindside. And the truth is, if that job has, has a, a availability to pay 14 to 18, 
and this employer is offering you only nine, now make no mistake, sometimes we have to take that because we have nothing, I get it. But don't sell yourself short either. You've come a long way, you have a road you want to take, and you have every right to pursue that. And certainly, if you come to them with that intelligent answer, they're going to look at you a little differently. They're going to know you did your homework, and that's what they want in their employees, somebody that's willing to go that extra step. Okay, so that was, I was just trying to reiterate. Mm -hmm. But uh, some, we did bring little pamphlets because what we typically do, and we've gone out in teams quite a bit, and to BCC quite a bit, is kind of open it up for questions and answers. People have needs of their own that are pertaining just to them, and they need to know who, who can help me with what I need. So if there's questions like that, please feel free. But other than that, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that we do have the workshops. We definitely have job assistance, career planning. That's always a nice thing to just kind of sit with someone and walk through, what am I going to do? What do I need to do that? Um, do they have a list about the uh, what you said last year? I was saying career planning to uh -huh. sit with a counselor. So they have a list about their careers? A list? Uh -huh. okay. To what careers? Uh -huh. People often ask us that question, do we have a list? We don't. It all depends on you as an individual, where you want to be. So there is no list. So let's say for an example, if you're going to school for administrative assistance, and you can use like more Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, then those are enhancements that we can help you with. But it usually depends on you as an individual. What is it you need and what it is that you're missing from that puzzle to make you more employable into what employers are looking for now. Because a lot has changed for employers. A lot of the, now, basically for office back in the day, I've been with the agency for 15 years. So when I first started back in the day, if you knew how to turn on a computer and knew how to use the keyboard, you had a job. But now when you go into Indeed.com, and all those websites, when you read the bottom print for just administrative assistant, it says it in black and white, Microsoft, Excel, PowerPoint. Because now everything's being done on computers and those we can help you. So it really depends on you, what it is that you feel that you need to make you more employable and give you the skills that the employers are asking for now. So a lot has changed when it comes to job search. Is there any position for language, like translating languages? Here. You're looking for a, a job like to interpreter. Be an interpreter? Yes. Yeah. Interpreters are invaluable in in the court system, Courts, in the medical yeah. system, no doubt about it. But mm -hmm. let, let me also tell you honestly, that's hard because you have to be so precise, mm -hmm. it, it, which only makes sense. You certainly wouldn't want someone interpreting for you into an English language in a courthouse, mm -hmm. and they're saying things differently than, than the what way you're you saying. Want it. So it's not just a matter mm -hmm. of knowing another language or, or a, a multitude. A multitude of language. I thought someone was coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not just a matter of how well you know a language. Mm -hmm. It's how well you can interpret it, bring it. You know, understand mm -hmm. somebody's concept of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like we we say things, and you might have an interpreter. We're all all speaking English. Mm -hmm. You are interpreted in one way. You're interpreted another way. That's the kind of testing. Is there a need? There is a need. Is there a training and a schooling? There absolutely yes. is. If that's something you want to do, certainly worth looking into. And BCC and offers does, it. BCC does offer it. It does mandate a good pay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily a 40 hour a week job, that's the it's only not. thing. But right. that might be exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. What you know? I'm saying is, is there like um, a need? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like jobs available. Yes. There is. But in that type of field, let's say for an example, if I was an employer and I hired you to be one of my interpreters, you're like on a call basis. If someone calls me from <coughs> New Bedford Court and they say, Marie, I need a, a Creole interpreter. Do you have one, so, someone available? I will call you and say, are you available to be at New Bedford um, the Court for three hours? You will take that three hour shift. That's the only hard part of being an interpreter. They call, it's like a non-need basis. The employer will take you on, but they'll call you when they need you to interpret. So on your path, mm -hmm. do you think that's a job that is really uh, needed around here? Most it definitely. Can be. It can be. <coughs> My suggestion, go on to labor market information. Yeah. Not only that, don't be afraid to pick up a phone. Yeah. Uh, Stockholm lawyers, the medical field, 
and just say uh, I was interested in taking a course and I, to become an interpreter. And Mass I'd like CIS. To know, do you have any means? Mass CIS dot into into careers. What is it? Mass M A S S C I S M A S S C I S dot into careers. You can do the LMI right there on that website. Into careers. Into careers. I T I N T O or into Mass C I S dot into careers. I N T O. I N T O. Yes. Because the we math, have, we have people ask for that every yeah. so often. We what get it a lot. Fear is that it's not a forty-hour week. It's not. It depends. The, mm -hmm. the money you get for that, you know, for working that day, your three hours mm -hmm. may be nice. They may not call you. May not have a need for you again. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. They may not have a need. Mm -hmm. They do some basic translating in the courts anyway. It's when there's like a trial to say a court setting. They do some basic translations mm -hmm. in a medical office. But when someone has a serious severe medical need, they may want you to mm -hmm. be more intricate and intimate to the, within that person. Right. But how often are you going to do That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. But it is, it does. It, it does, does exist. Yeah, it does yes. exist. It, it, they it have it. Um, if you can travel even better. Creole, Portuguese, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where? VCC offers it. Offers a course. It's a course. There. And it's a short course. It's a certificate program. Well, I'll tell you about this. You see, it's a short course. Mm -hmm. It's not really a short course. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going, it depends what language you're going to. Right. right. Because or that's where you're coming from. Into. Right. I have okay. somebody that just graduated from BCC, and she's working in the field. But she's on call. Oh, it depends mm -hmm. on your background. That's what, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yes. If you're trying something brand new, yeah. yes. like everything else, mm -hmm. and that's what you want to be aware of. Yeah, yes. it's little. Because yeah. if you, like um, right now, I'm doing the three different languages. Right. So one of them, if I don't have the background, it's not sharp. No. Right. It's a long one. Because mm -hmm. you have to start from the basic. All the way you up. Can go you're willing to do that? Right. That's, that's what I'm that's doing. Good. Okay. I have maybe yeah. one more year. Good. But I have already the two other languages, so mastered. Like four languages. Right. Yeah. So you're going for a degree. Uh, that's what I would like. Degree. Good. And another thing is because they have the um, me and her. We always talk about this uh, to be an interpreter, but they also has translations. Right. Which is all computers, papers. Yeah. Right. The terminology too. Yeah. So where is the jobs for that? Translations to do translation English to Spanish. She has other languages. In a paper yeah. language, is that what you're trying to say? Okay, just to yeah. be just to be useful of someone's operation mm -hmm. to translate their paperwork. Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I That's don't know hard. off the top, but you're welcome to come in and we'll help you research it. Yeah. I don't have that answer right here, but um, I'm sure I'm thinking more of a state level, honestly. Yeah. The people that would need it, the unemployment office would need things like that. Right. Um, where, where it's mandatory to be able to serve and serve everyone. That's mm -hmm. what I would think right now, but we, we'll be more than happy to look more into that. Mm -hmm. I know in the medical field, like we said, the, what we do know, local, basic, it's she, what she's saying is like per diem. Right. Get I'm looking call. more into the immigration. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, yeah, they need that. Yeah, I will have all the language. Yeah. French, the Cambodian, the Portuguese, yeah. the Spanish, English, yeah. all that. That's like Catholic social services. Or the immigration system. Or the immigration on Crapel Street. Have you in touch with them at all? Have you? I work for them. Yeah. You work as an interpreter as we yeah. speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be real good with oh, Helena. Yeah. And as far as looking for more work, she may be a, a great resource for that for you. Because we can use more interpreters in the city. And if you would just volunteer, you can come to Career Center. We certainly could do that. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. They're just not high. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, we do need a lot. very, very difficult right now mm -hmm. to help people to what, in the way they need it. Because like you said, even when you know a language, there's words that you just be on our own diction, if you will. That could be in English. You're speaking to me mm -hmm. in English, and there's things I'm not quite understanding. Yes, yes. Do you the know documents. What I mean? I'm, I'm not even talking about an accent or anything like that. I'm just saying words. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's an intense, it can be a very intense position. And when it comes to saying you're going to do it legally, you do have tests to pass. 
being helpful, a volunteer, going into other agencies and just being available, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. When it has to really be documented, what that person's doing, what that person has, it becomes much more you know, critical and, and understood. Because sometimes you have to send those documents to the state and city where they were born, and it has to be notarized by that state. Mm -hmm. That's a nice job to have. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. Yes. But mm -hmm. like I said, you you may have to travel. Yeah. Providence, I'm sure, would snatch you up. Boston's Fall River. Kind of upset, but definitely Fall River. Fall River. You know. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. It's hard. So mm -hmm. that's why you have to, when you're doing your career path and you're thinking about what courses you want to take in school, what job you want to have, you have to know where they're going to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, these careers sounds wonderful. Uh, if I had it to do all over again, my degree is actually in teaching, and I'm not teaching now. I look at like CIS mm -hmm. and I, that investigative work, that looks like so much fun. Mm -hmm. Like I wish I, that had been available younger. But again, yes, it, and it does, and I'll still say that, but would I have gotten a job? Where would I have gone? I'd have to leave New Bedford probably, you know, to be employable. So you want to know that. You want to know where, where am mm -hmm. I going to go with this? Okay. And what do I already have, like you said? You have a nice basic basis because you already had some language knowledge, mm -hmm. okay? And look, at, and it's still difficult to build yeah. on it and make sure you perfected the words, but you had something. So now when you have your certificate and or degree, you're gonna tell that employer, look, you know, look what I have. And I have an understanding of the culture. You have the education. Mm -hmm. Those are things that you really want. And through all the workshops that you've sat here and attended today, that's what you want to do. And oh, no one can answer that better than you. And that's what you have to, when people come in, they want a magic list. They want to know this, you know, what can, what can you do? What can you give me? We can offer you almost anything you need. We'll do our best to find out how to get it to you. Being able to use the colleges, or uh, community colleges now, has been made things much more accessible. Before we just had vendors, and mm -hmm. this vendor pretty much did office. This one pretty much did CNA or LPN even, you know. But now with the colleges, we're able to pull from that many mm -hmm. different things. But it starts with you, okay? So please know that and understand. But again, you're welcome at any time to come through the door, see what we have to offer, become a member, does it hurt, free. There's nothing we do that we charge you for. It's absolutely free. Do okay, you guys so um, help with internships? We did. That's a little tricky right now, but we can. If you come in, we can go to the CEO and ask about that. Yeah. We used to. What happens is a line of confidentiality. Uh -huh. What we can use oftentimes is people willing to do work in the resource room, like helping other folks. And it depends what you're looking for at the end of the road. Uh -huh. Okay. Maybe there's something that you can target in. It's one more thing to put on your resume. I, I'm able to assist in Microsoft Word or computer research. Do you know what I mean? Um, that's, that we can always use, and, and someone like this young lady who could come in and interpret for people to make them feel a little more comfortable. They can't maybe get into the personal part of the confidentiality, but they can tell us what this person's needs are. That oftentimes we get stuck if we don't have their language or know their language. Why exactly are you here today? So we don't even know quite where to send them to get them started. So that's always. But please, by all means, my, my answer to that is you need to come in and see what we can do. Do you have the address of the <coughs> down there? Of what? The, address. the career, career center? center? Yeah. Boy, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Gracie, here's yeah, the other one. Like I said, these little flyers. It is a question of that. If you go to Walgreens and go around the bend, You know where the big ferry parking lot is? Mm -hmm. The ferry parking lot is here. Career center is right after the parking lot. We have. I believe we have three fra flags in front of our building. You cannot miss us. You go down the little ramp, you, you pass the big parking lot, and the, our building's right next to it, right before the tire place. We're right in the middle. Mm -hmm. But you want to, you can give a call and see what recruitments are going on. You may just call the right day at the right time, and it might be just what you need, what you're looking for. Okay, I know that's a little tricky because it's very specific, but you need to start getting out there networking. You know what I'm saying? Find out where the place is going to be. Let them know you're coming. I'm getting there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Networking is a key. Yes. No doubt. 
because what we don't know, somebody right. has to sit beside you in this booth and they don't know exactly what to tell you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions, concerns? Can you always change the career counselor that you're assigned to? <laughs> That's an open question. <laughs> I think she's come addressing you. Me. You can come see me. We will we'll talk about that. I, if there's a reason, I, I would imagine. I don't want you to work with someone you're not happy with because you're not going to be successful. Question. I don't know about that. <laughs> that seems specific. But yeah, we can help you. We don't make you stay with someone. You are assigned that day. But certainly, if that's not a good match, and that could go for you or the counselor, mm -hmm. if that's not a good match, that's not what we want. We want to make sure that you're as successful as possible. And believe it or not, even that person you may not be agreeing with, they want that too, because that's their job. Okay, but that's life. You know what I mean? That happens, and I understand completely. Yes, I can help you. Yes. Last question. No, doesn't um, have to be. I know be. someone that is interested in to graduate from high school and goes for a search a job because he don't want to go to college. Okay. okay. So. He, he's looking something to do constructions or to work hard work, men's work. Okay. So women do I, that job too, though. <laughs> so you know, and they make good money. They make a good money, exactly. But how do you can? Because I hear from people in the court mm -hmm. that they have local 98, local 385 in Stanton, and you have to give them their names and they call you. Because it's for my son. He wanted to do like, um, how do you call that? Uh, to drive uh, drive the big machines, the heavy equipment operator. The, exactly. So he wanted to go for it, but mm -hmm. they can call him or they cannot call him. So the career center has any training that can provide for the students, young people. He's still in high school. Is he out of high school? He's gonna graduate. So you're talking about senior. he wants to look at that when he's done with he's, school. That's his career. Yeah. That's okay, his goal. So yeah, that's his goal. Okay. And yes, we certainly can look at that. But um, those type of trainings, unfortunately, are not usually local. It's that's the local. only problem we have. It's not, not local. It's not usually local. The person would have to travel a little bit to get to that training. Yes, but once they have it, it's an, again. How far did yeah. they tell you it was? How, Few weeks ago, they said that they have a local in. Uh, I think it's near to Taunton or something like that. There's a training program in Taunton. That's not bad. Uh, that is uh, within the uh, regions. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, Taunton is but not they far. They also has another place in Fairhaven, local 98. You're talking about the agency, the local 385 is in, in Fairhaven, for example. I, I know that is something. Okay. From now, that's local union. 385 union. is a union office yeah. for construction workers. <laughs> They train their men in Hopkinton. Yeah. Where the marathon starts. Yeah. They yes. Yes. They, they, um, they uh, oftentimes, a, a union will have their own site. Yeah. And again, for training. it's not always close. Exactly. But it, the unemployment, the, your offices has no information about that? Not about what the union owns, but there are some independent training Trainings, programs yes. that we could look at. Yes. So it means that he can go to Because the Absolutely. union is union. The, some unions, like Mrs. Grace just said, they offer their training for their construction workers and they send them as far as New Hampshire for training. Yeah. Right. But through the career center, like Mrs. Grace said, we can always look into anything new. Yes. Okay. All right. And he's young, so he's starting at a good age. Okay. Uh -huh. And he can move up. Okay. Because heavy equipment is the big cranes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he can go over there with you and yeah. find a little bit more information. And Absolutely. we can guide him, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You okay? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. Anything else, guys, that we can help you? I know you've sat here for a long time. We appreciate you waiting mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. We do. But again, come walking in at any time, and we'd be happy to assist you. And good luck. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.